across the country, there is shock and frustration. Since the massacre in Buffalo three weeks ago, there have literally been more mass shootings than there have been days. To be exact, since May 14th, there have been at least 37 mass shootings in this country. That's according to the nonprofit Gun Violence Archive. One of those was on Wednesday in Tulsa, Oklahoma. There, a gunman walked into a medical building and allegedly killed four people and himself. And in Uvalde, Texas, funerals have begun for the 21 students and teachers who were shot to death at Robb Elementary School last week. In a primetime speech, President Biden addressed the nation. After Columbine, after Sandy Hook, after Charleston, after Orlando, after Las Vegas, after Parkland, nothing has been done. This time, that can't be true. This time, we, we must actually do something. For God's sake, how much more carnage are we willing to accept? How many more innocent American lives must be taken before we say enough, enough? Meanwhile, a bipartisan group of lawmakers working to hammer out some sort of gun reform bill, form about gun reform bill say a, quote, framework for a deal is close. Joining me tonight to discuss this and more, Eugene Daniels, playbook author and White House correspondent for Politico, and Annie Carney, congressional reporter for The New York Times. There's so much going on. I want to start, of course, with you, Eugene, because there was this primetime speech. President Biden laid out so many things that he wants to see happen. But what's the sense inside the White House of how much the president can really influence Congress to pass something? Yeah, what you saw yesterday was the president talking to a bunch of different audiences. First was members of Congress, who he was saying, these are the things I want to do. And this is a list that we've heard from him when he was heading up the gun task force during the Obama administration after Sandy Hook. So talking about ban on assault rifles, talking about assault weapons, talking about a registry, talking about red flag laws, these kinds of things that have a lot of bipartisan support among voters. And then also, more importantly, talking to the American people and channeling their frustration. The administration thinks that it went well at the White House. When you talk to them, they think that the speech did what it was supposed to do. But the problem is, and the thing that you did not hear was executive action that he is thinking of doing. That's because a sense in the White House is that they've done a lot of what they had can do, and their hands are tied when it comes to the executive action that they have left. They've done, I think, four different tranches of executive action on guns and gun control and gun safety um, laws, but they can't do much more. And that's where they are now worried as they watch members of Congress go through what we've seen over and over and over again, which is a bipartisan effort come together, hope that something might happen, and then kind of waiting on pins and needles to see if it actually does. And Annie, uh, the president at one point said, I've told you what I want to do. And he said, the question now is, what will Congress do? Um, of course, that bring, that's squarely on your beat. All eyes are on these bipartisan um, lawmakers. What more do we know about the framework that they say they're close to or have sort of settled on? And really, is this going to happen? It looks like something. People are optimistic that something is going to happen. Uh, Senator Cornyn from Texas made a statement in, in, to Politico saying it would be embarrassing if we got nothing done. And that was seen by advocates, by a lot of people watching closely, as a really strong statement from a Republican like Cornyn to make, um, indicating that something will happen. Now, the question is, how modest is it going to be? And most Democrats have been burned so many times before in this kind of debate and assume that it will be quite modest, that it won't be lowering the age to buy an assault weapon, something modest on background checks, something on red flag laws. But modest is also getting something done to show that legislative legislation can pass in the Senate. There can be 60 votes, and the sky doesn't fall in. And they think it'll, like, start chipping away at, at the, you know, the the inability to do anything. And what I really am struck by is that there's broadly this sense of, like, every time one of these tragedies happens, nothing's going to change. And yet, in the among Democrats working on the issue, among the activists in this world, they are optimistic. They take a long view, and they think that, like, something that's going to look quite small, potentially, actually matters quite a bit. But uh, modest is is kind of the best hope here. And it's really interesting that you say it, because I remember covering Newtown, Connecticut, and the shooting at Sandy Hook Elementary School. I thought the world was going to change. I now think of that as a decade ago as a naive reporter, because, of course, nothing changed. But it does seem like you said this time is a little different. I do want to go to you, Eugene, because in Playbook today, you pointed out that in February, 
February 2020, President Biden um, had this gun speech when he was hoping to win Nevada and when he was sort of down and, and needing to win um, in the primaries in 2020. And then he, he pledged that he was going to have this gun legislation on his first day in office, and then it didn't happen. Connect that February 2020 speech to the pressure the president is feeling now. Yeah, because he made a lot of promises on the campaign trail. We are, all remember all of the Democrats did because they were thinking about how can we possibly beat Donald Trump? You have to get um, not just the base, which is black voters, and they're a little bit more moderate. You have to get liberals very excited to vote. And so that's what they did. He made very large promises on what he was going to be able to do with gun legislation. And not knowing that he was going to have 50 Democratic senators um, to do something, if anything, on um, pieces of legislation. And so now, as you watch um, different constituencies that are really important to the administration, whether that is um, gun control advocates, whether that is civil rights groups because of issues like um, uh, what happened in Buffalo, all of those different groups are pushing and talking to the administration, asking, what are you doing? And like I said, they've done a lot of the executive action they feel like they can do, but they wanted to see President Biden get out there more. He hasn't been super involved in the negotiations on what's happening with the bipartisan effort, wanting to give um, the senators time and space to do that. Um, it's not always helpful <laughs> for a president to jump in and, and try to help negotiate um, a bipartisan effort, but that was giving advocates a little pause about what he was going to be able to do. And I want to follow up because there have been more than 200 mass shootings this year. Polling shows that Americans over and over again say that they are back, back they are open to backing things like changes in background checks. Does the White House have a sense that this is going to change things, that there's a sort of, that all of this sort of cultural things uh, and the polling, that that's kind of giving this sense of urgency that something will really be done? Yeah, I think they're hopeful, you know what I mean? But they, just like all of us, watched Sandy Hook happen and nothing happened. A lot of the folks that are working at the White House now were working for either Vice President Biden or working somewhere in the administration um, at that time. So they've been burned before on this issue. And so when you talk to folks, what they say is they're encouraged by what they're seeing. They're not thinking something huge is going to happen. Um, but they are hopeful that if you look at, you know, you break a little crack in the dam and then you have some flooding Russia in, and you have a little bit of changes happening. And Senator Chris Murphy, who's leading this for Democrats, he t he's been telling reporters that if I can just get my, you know, Republican colleagues to realize that the world is not going to end if we get something done on legislation, maybe we can do this again. And, and Annie, the crack in the dam, um, I like that metaphor because in some ways it is sort of, if they can just get a little thing done, then maybe it'll overflow. I'm also really interested in asking you about this. I was thinking about it all day and I was like, I can't wait to talk to Annie about this. And it's the House bill. There's a bill happening, it's going forward. What's the point of it if we know it's gonna not be passed in the Senate? Well, there, I mean, it's still important to show support. Um, and it, it now the House bill, there's a passed bill that Senator Schumer now has to decide next week. Like, he has to give them space to have these negotiations, and he has to decide, like, am I going to bring up that House bill for a vote? Or if some, I have to bring at some point, if there's not going to be a compromise, I'm going to bring a vote, and it can be a show vote. Um, he's had many, you know, the, the Congress does this a lot, a vote that they know will fail, but it has to show where everyone stands. Yeah. Um, so, and, and they think, you know, 70% of this country supports background checks, yeah. and Republicans will have to stand there and vote no uh, for something that has broad popular support. So, and, and I think it's just important for, you know, they want to, they can, the House can pass a bill like that. Why wouldn't they? And then say it's on to you, to the Senate, to, to take some action. To, there's a bill there waiting for them to vote on if it comes to that. Yeah. I think next week, the real question for Schumer will be, do we have to take a vote on a bill we know is going to fail? Or is this uh, bipartisan group going to come up with a framework? Obviously, they'd rather pass legislation than have a show vote. And another question that I had for you, Representative Chris Jacobs is this Republican who it represents a district that is 10 miles um, from where Buffalo, New York, where that massacre happened, where 10 black people were killed. He came out and said that he actually was in support of a federal assault weapons ban. Um, and then now he faced a lot of GOP backlash and he's no longer running for re-election. Tell me a little bit about what he's going through tells us about the political stakes I that mean, Republicans I are facing. I think he lasted seven days after coming <laughs> out against, um, you know, for gun control efforts, and, and now he, today, just uh, the story broke that he is not running for re-election re anymore. I mean, that should temper anyone who's feeling incredibly hopeful right now about um, the party, where the Republican Party is, the control 
that the NRA still has even a diminished state um, over Republican lawmakers. There, you know, there's no grade that's more important to a lot of people. There's no issue that defines the party so much as the Second Amendment um, that just states the feeling about government, the feeling about in free independence and your your own rights yeah. as this issue. So, you know, it's a it's a cautionary tale for anyone feeling like. Um, this, you know, we watched the slaughter of, of school children, and now there's going to be some big moment, and you just look at what happened seven days after coming out um, for gun control efforts. He's out of the race. And despite, yeah, sorry, but, but but despite all of the popular support that we all know and we all talk about every time there's a you know there's one of these shootings, um, there's not a lot of incentive, political incentive for Republicans to do that. Obviously, he's a perfect example. But when you talk to voters about what's going to take them to the polls, things like um, gun control and abortion do not rise to the levels that you know Democrats or people who want to see these things change would want. It's about the economy. It's about inflation.